<laughs> Thank you so much for coming over. Um, this is my first webinar and I had some technical issues with Webinar Ninja, which is a tool that I'm, you know, checking at the moment. But like everything else, you know, tool is just a tool. So I had to improvise, which I'm good at. <laughs> And um, I received some questions and I'm going to then, you know, open the mics for you or you can open the mics if you, you know, um, if you have a question as well. Um, some of the questions that I received and they were very, very similar. And it's basically um, one of them, which is very, very important is how do I find my target audience? So which um, groups will I find my target audience, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some little techniques that you can use. Oh, hey, Susie. Hey. <laughs> Fantastic. Susie is in Greece. On the beach. You have to excuse, excuse the attire. I've come back from the beach especially for this. So um, I was just saying that I'm going to um, show you how you find your target audience. So... It, which groups can you find a target audience and use hashtags as well for finding the target audience. So the first thing about your target audience is you have to be very specific and very clear in who they are, okay? And once you are specific on who they are, it's much, much easier to find hashtags that relate to that audience and um, where they're hanging out, okay? So if I just um, share my screen quickly, hopefully you can see that. I just take that off the screen. Okay. So one of the ways that you can uh, find your target audience is um, by going on the personal profile of your ideal client. So if you have, imagine you already have a client um, that fits ideally in that target audience, okay? So um, I'm gonna talk about myself. So my target audience are coaches, female coaches. So, um, you know, I look and into their personal profile and I go to, okay, I just did something else here, wait a minute. I just quickly show you on uh, Zoom is so slow enough. So, so uh, a coach that I know is um, come on. So a coach that I know is Shell Andrews. So I find it on the graph search. Graph search is like searching Google. It's like searching Bing, Yahoo, okay? Um, every uh, platform has a search facility that you can find so much stuff in there. Carol. So I go to our personal profile and hopefully she's got some, um, some groups there visible. And you go to the more tab, okay? And if you drop down, come on. Okay, so if you go to the more tab and you drop down, you've got the groups on the bottom. Oops, so busy. You've got the groups on the bottom and you just press on that groups. Okay, so you, I know exactly which group she's in and, you know, some of them already joined and I can look at, um, she's got also some private groups that she runs herself and then I'll look at other groups that it might be relevant for myself. So you just go in and basically I normally choose groups that are smaller in group, in, in size, um, just because if you, they're too uh, big, um, the conversation starts getting too too fast, too quick. 
Okay, so also another thing that you can search is by hashtags. So somebody else asked me about hashtags. What are hashtags and how, um, how do you search them? So you can search by hashtag, okay? So um, depending on the industry that you're working on, um, you can try and find some other hashtags that are relevant to it. So a hashtag is a group of... Um, conversations of people interested in the same um, specific subject. Okay, so in this case, I just go, um, I just do a search on hashtag uh, coaching, I press on, and it brings you on the top a lot of things about coaching where that hashtag is being used. So, people, you have pages. And then again, if you want to find groups where people are looking for coaching, it'll bring you a series of groups um, that you can join. So then again, um, the strategy that uh, you use on groups with your posting, uh, first of all, read the rules of the group, okay, because there's, there, you know, there are many, many groups, and now going forward to the future, spam is not allowed whatsoever. Groups are for conversations, for making connections, for um, you know meeting other people with the same pain points um, that you can solve. So um, look at the rules. You know, um, post. Um, don't post the same post every single day, you know, be a bit more creative with your posting and um, how so, you know, just connect with people, just ask them questions, um, um, you know, just connect and engage. And if you, if you find, if you go through the posts in specific groups that you have for this week, for example, um, coming <laughs> um, if they have any if they have any pain points you know just try and help them out you know that's how you connect with people um, so another thing about hashtags I use there's many places that you can um, find the best hashtags for your business I use a tool called um, hashgify me okay um, I'll, I'll put that link on the chat box in a minute so you can save it and you'll have that. So basically, again, you do the search on the keyword that is most relevant to your business, okay? And then you, have, you will have a series of other hashtags that are people talking about, success, um, inspiration, leadership. Okay, so you can use those hashtags in your posts. But again, don't um, pile up the posts with hashtags. Um, you know, normally just one or two is more than enough. Um, the Even like for example, on Twitter, you know, a hashtag, you only have 140 characters. So on Twitter, you know, um, using a hashtag, use hashtag on your sentence, for example, but don't put too many hashtags. It will get too busy otherwise. Okay, so another question oh, about the groups on LinkedIn groups, for example. Again, you can do um, searches. So over there on the graph search here, you can do searches for finding live coaches, groups of people that are a life coach, okay? And, it, you know, just, again, the same technique, go into those groups, um, find that if they are relevant, um, have a look. Now with LinkedIn, you have to kind of um, ask permission to join the group. There was a lot of spamming. And there still is, so just have a look at the group if, if, if it's relevant for your business. And then um, ask permission, go look at your profile, 
okay? See if it's relevant, if you're going to bring value to that group. And again, the same techniques, you know, um, introduce yourself and uh, tell, them, tell them who you are and how you can help and just answer questions that you'll find uh, in that specific group. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions of what I've, what I've talked so far. Uh, if you want to, if you want to, no, no questions. Fine. Good, good. So another, another question that I, that I had is, okay, how do you decide which scheduler to use? Okay, um, and how how do you plan your post? So, if a scheduler is just a tool. Okay, so there are many schedulers, and the, the, the strategy I use, um, I've used other, many schedulers in the past. Um, I've been with Hootsuite Pro, and I've tried Buffer. And I've tried many other tools, okay? So it just depends on your goals um, for your business and what you want out of that tool. So for me, I need a tool so I can manage my clients when I'm doing social media management. Um, so that when I was using a Hootsuite Pro, uh, somebody, I need to mute somebody, I think. Uh, I think it's Jana. Okay, just I think it's Jana. Jana, can you mute yourself, please? Are you, you mean you're hearing me on the phone? Yeah, if you mute yourself, right down below, there's a little microphone thing. You can just click on it and you mute yourself. Just for now, because otherwise. No, nope, that's okay. First time using it. <laughs> no problem. Um, so I used Hootsuite Pro and it um, fulfilled my needs until I needed to start reporting monthly to my clients, okay? And um, so Hootsuite Pro, it's, it's a good tool. It gives you a dashboard that you can go in every morning and um, schedule your posts and... Um, engage with other people through that. Um, but for the reporting side, it's always like extra. And then I started finding um, that I couldn't recycle posts, posts that had quite a, a good engagement in the past. I couldn't recycle them. Um, so I've moved to a different tool. So now for the past three months, I've been using a tool that I absolutely love. Um, it's not cheap, but if you, if you are managing, and I know some, um, some people are here, for, social media managers are here. If you are managing other clients, uh, this tool is absolutely amazing. It's a digital matchbox and it, um, created by... A social media manager consultant so she knows that the read ins and outs of uh, what's needed for us to control so basically this is my go-to place first thing in the morning I just um, let me take this out of that so you can see so first thing in the morning I go in and I checked my groups uh, my pages, uh, my clients' pages, and, you know, engage through that. So you can, you can comment, you can show the comments, you can reply in here, everything. You can also monitor certain keywords. Um, you have content suggestions, and um, this is really good because you can actually get feeds into... Um, into your own um, social media channels. So you can share some of the feeds already that are in there. And there's, there's loads and loads of content in there for you to share. And um, basically the, the, 
the rule that I have with sharing other people's contents, um, it's the, you know, the 80, 20 rule. So 80% is other people's contents, um, you know, for social proof for, for social proof for, um, you know, showing support, collaborating, and 20% is my own uh, content. Uh, it also has like a CRM in included in it, which um, it's quite good. And of course, you know, it's got all sorts of other things. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, like I said, this one included in the monthly charge um, has um, a reporting section. So you can report um, any social media channel. You can report a Google Analytics, everything. So it's very, very um, complete. Okay, so, um, but how, how are you going to organize all this? Okay, so this is another question that somebody's asked. How do I manage all this? Okay, so what I use is um, a social media content, editorial content template, which has, um, and I put the link on the chat as well, and I'm going to send that as a freebie, no opt-in, um, so you can organize your, um, your, um, your social media. And um, also this, this is in my uh, media starter kit. This template is my social media starter kit. Um, and basically what we'll give you, oh, wait a minute, let me get it. I'm so disorganized here. I was going to show you the, um, the content calendar. Okay. What I'll do is I'll put the link in now. On the chat box. And basically what this has is a whole overview of, um, I'm put on a chat box. Okay, I hope you can see it on a chat box. Uh, it's got an over, uh, overview of your yearly um, themes, events, launches, whatever is happening for the year. You have, um, you know, you can put it on it. You should be, so you can visualize it and then um, all the social media campaigns um, that you are going to work on for that specific launch or, or event, you work backwards, okay? Or the posting, you work backwards on it. And then you have like um, a monthly um, posting, so uh, by theme. So, for example, you have, um, you know, a motivational, insp inspirational day, a quote, a um, a uh, blog post that you want to share, um, another business that you want to support. So um, depending on a strategy on a posting, then you have different themes within it. Okay. So, and that's what I do. So that's, you know, that's all part of the planning. So that template really helps me plan all my posting, all my social media posting for the month. Let me have a look in the chat to see if there's any questions in there. And by the way, on the chat box, if you go to the more, um, you drop down on the more um, arrow and you can save that uh, chat box. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing now so I can see you. And I'll probably open the mics and just ask you if you have any questions that you want me to cover in here. Anybody? Are you, are you listening to me? <laughs> I'll, unmute, I'll unmute myself. Um, 
the question I have, and it was on the, on the chat thing, when you do it on Instagram, obviously they encourage a lot of hashtags. Um, and the reason for it is because you get more followers and it's just categorized better that way. However, you have an option of putting it on Facebook. You have an option of putting it on Twitter. And I have done that, but I realized that in Facebook, people don't like seeing a whole bunch of hashtags. Um, yeah. Is that a bad thing? Yeah. So again, on on Instagram, what I've heard recently is that the hashtags should actually go in the comments. So when mm. I do it, when I post something from Instagram and cross promote into Facebook and Twitter, um, I again just use one or two hashtags. Um, normally. I use my own hashtag, which is hashtag social biz roadmap, okay, which I've created. And I use business or coaching, for example. And I only use a couple of hashtags in, um, in the actual main, the main text of Instagram. Then um, when that Instagram post starts getting momentum, and people start uh, commenting on it, then you can put more hashtags in the comments. And it, in that way, is less spamming. But again, it's what hashtags you put on it. Right. Because, you know, hashtag sun or hashtag beach, sorry, Susie, <laughs> it's probably not relevant for your business, you know. So you're going to get a lot of spammy comments if you put that type of hashtags in it. It has to be relevant. I understand that at that point. But I had talked to somebody and they said, put a whole bunch of hashtags. And I was like, okay. And then I did it for a while. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting followers, but I just don't like the look of it. And then I was being creative and creating, you know, the sentence and then the hashtag inside the sentence. But that didn't work really well either. So... <laughs> I do that sometimes. So I put the hashtag for Twitter and Instagram. I put the hashtag inside the sentence. So if I'm talking about um, small businesses, um, there is a specific hashtag for small business. So if I want to target small businesses, I use that hashtag and I put it within the sentence. But again, I don't put too many hashtags because it's just, it's just spammy. And, um, Again, you're right, Preston. A lot of people, this is conversations of people talking about the beach or the sun, and it's not really relevant for your business. So you don't want those going through your stream sort of thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody has any more questions? So, um, so if nobody has any more, sorry. oh yeah, I've got a quick question, Sophia. As you know, I I know my way around Twitter and Facebook. LinkedIn is my biggest bugbear. And one question I've got about that is when I'm writing a blog, people say that I should create one in LinkedIn as well, but to make it different. But the idea is, is I'm actually wanting them to go to my website. So do you put the entire blog, which is the same as what's in your website in LinkedIn, or do you just put the first part of it and then tell them to link across to the website for the rest? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. I have um, attended a webinar with Rebecca Van Rossen, which is okay. um, a lady that is really big on LinkedIn. Okay? On that webinar, she told us that um, the blog post, the article that you create on LinkedIn, LinkedIn posts, okay? So you create on LinkedIn posts can be the same of any other blog post that you have on your website. There, the search engine on LinkedIn is completely independent from Google search, from Bing, from Yahoo, okay? So you're not going to be penalized uh, by having the same writing, okay? So the structure, again, of a blog post is keep them interested in the first part with a problem. So there is 
there is an anatomy for creating a blog post, right? So you keep them interested, you give, you know, you focus on the pain point that they have, you give a little snippet of a solution, and then you put a call to action at the end of that article in post on LinkedIn. So basically, you can put whatever you have on your website, the same blog post can be scheduled into um, LinkedIn posts. So you wouldn't recommend trying to get them across your website with it, just keep that completely separate? No, what I would do, for example, if you have like events, just create a, a new kind of a LinkedIn post article um, f specific for that event. So you're going to increase awareness to that specific event. So that event could not, might not be on your website. That event might be a local event or something. Um, and you want to move them to a different landing page. So I know you do social media management. So for your clients, if they have an event, you want that link to go to that specific event so people um, join and register for the event. Okay, thank you. And of course, also, um, you know, with, the, with that um, LinkedIn Pulse article, it's important that to share it. Um, share it with groups that are relevant for, you know, for the, the subject of the article and share it with your connections. And sometimes you might, if you can even share with individuals, you know, you might have like collaborations with somebody and you can share, oh, just check this out, you know, that this is going to happen soon. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't necessarily talking about a specific event. What I'm looking at is obviously increasing brand awareness to the website. Um, so I didn't know whether LinkedIn is the forum to actually get a direct link to it or whether just to get people to know me as an influencer and then they go off and check the website separately. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know whether I should get them to go off to the website to actually read the full article. Yeah, I see what you mean. So I would, if to, to drive traffic to your website, I would put then um, a link on the um, a call to action to your website. So you attract traffic to your website, but then, then be creative because like send them to a different article. So you were talking about say a checklist of some sort, you can send them to a freebie opt-in. So uh, you can grab them on your email list, for example. Pat. Hi, could you hear uh, me? Hi. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, that was a great question. So if I could add one thing that's worked the best for me, I do a lot in chats in uh, groups on LinkedIn. So I have done the blogging on LinkedIn to build credibility because you'd be amazed at how many people are following and refer back to things that have happened over time. So it's a great platform for gathering interest and credibility. The other best tip that I do is relevant conversation, like you said, Sophia, in the groups. But when people start to comment, whether it's your conversation that you started or you find conversations of relevance to your target audience and you're chiming in, there is a, a opportunity at the bottom that says reply privately. So I could say, oh, Sophia, I love how you think. That was really cool. We should talk offline if you want, blah, blah, blah. So I, my next best move is booking discovery calls with people, right? Because yeah. I do business coaching for coaches, Yeah, for example. Right. So I'm not trying to sell them a ninety seven dollar product. I'm trying to get them on a discovery call. So using that reply privately takes them out of that invite open. So you're not going and using up your invites and you don't have to worry about what their email is because it connects you directly in and goes straight to their inbox. Yeah. So if that helps you, that's the best, best, best personal engagement because it's already already relevant you're already on the same page or in the same discussion so to be able to say oh i you know in the golfers blah blah, blah i like what you said or i disagree or i can help or have you tried and you can personally invite them to whatever your next best move is yeah i hope that helps but yeah thank you thank you so much 
Um, I think this is going to finish. I don't know if anybody has any more questions. I'm putting some more links um, on the chat box. So basically, um, I was going to talk about my social media starter kit um, that I've got going. So it's a four module course and it goes through um, the most important thing when you start on social media is to set your goals. You know, it needs to be done with a purpose. So we start with the goals and then we go into content management. Um, the content um, management template is in there. There's a loads of worksheets. You also have my full support and accountability throughout. Okay. Um, we have uh, presentations about how to engage tips on how to repurpose content and i'm always adding more and more to it okay so um i was going to do a little sneak peek but i think i'm going to run out of time and um this is just this is just the beginning right you know um i had some technical technical issues this morning and i really wanted the webinar to go on for about an hour but um next time will be even more awesome <laughs> so um yeah i also put a link for the match matchbox pro um a social media tool okay um and of course i've got an affiliate uh, affiliate link there as well for my course um if you are interested to promote it and be in my affiliate members I um, pay out 25% commission for it. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any more questions. I can't hear you, Sana. You need to. There's, there's a question in the chat about um, avoiding overwhelm from Pat. Uh, pat, pat. I feel like I spend too much time in social planning and engaging. Hours slip by. I think we can all relate to that. <laughs> At the yes. times. Yes, and I'm actually thinking. I'm actually going to to write um, a little ebook, a free ebook about how to be effective on social media in less than an hour a day. It's all about planning. It's all, you know, if. In my case, I'm a social media manager as well, but um, um, if you plan your day properly, you can interact and engage with your community, say 50 minutes in the morning, 50 minutes in, you know, in, in at lunchtime and 50 minutes in, in the afternoon, afternoon and evening. So you've got an hour there, you know, just 50 minutes each. And it's just, quickly go through the groups that you manage or the groups that you um, you interact with and just see if there's anybody that needs your help, basically. So well, time suck is a huge thing. And, and sometimes when your business starts to up level, you need to start outsourcing, outsourcing and delegating that type of task, really. Um, you don't want to do management of your social media, but you want to find somebody that has your voice, that understands your brand, and they can do it for you. I got another question if I can ask. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about the, uh, the post of Pulse in LinkedIn, when you, when you post it, can you post a video on it? Yeah, you can post, you can embed uh, videos. So you get an embed, embed code from YouTube. We can embed videos on the LinkedIn Pulse. Okay. Um, I knew you could do it inside of the, the structure of LinkedIn for your profile, but I didn't realize you could do it on Pulse. Yeah, you can. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Ajit, do you have any questions? And down below, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, okay. There you go. Oh, you can hear me now. Um, yeah, well, basically, I'm more interested in sort of product marketing because I've got an online boutique that sells fair trade products. 
So um, I'm just getting into social media now. At the moment, um, I do like sort of Twitter and I love Instagram because it's almost instant um, and you get like sort of feedback very quickly and lots of followers very quickly. Um, but I would really like to like, sort of, um, you know, get into a habit of scheduling um, Facebook and maybe just concentrating on one or two things instead of trying to do everything across platforms because then I end up doing absolutely nothing. So I think it's better if I just sort of think, okay, I love Instagram, I'm going to stick to that. Um, and then also um, Facebook I do anyway and Twitter. Maybe, you know, that way I'm going to have more sort of influence and um, more sort of effective, you know, sort of sales and stuff like that. So my main thing is because I've got a product, um, I'll be into trying to promote my products and seeing if I can engage people enough to get sales from that, even though I know it's quite difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, I mean, for you, um, planning is really important, right? Because you don't want to be on social media every single minute. Um, so it's, get, grab the, um, the content editorial templates and just plan it by event so if you have a product launch or if you have um, a specific product for the season that you want to promote um just put that on the put that on the map put that on for the years so, you know I, I don't know a lot about your business but um just just think about like launches a launch does not need to be just for a digital product it can be for a physical product as well yes. so if you have events going on in your boutique, uh, you can put all that in the calendar. So you just put the, put on the on the template your vision for the year, and then per month, what kind of posts do you need? Like for Facebook, um, three posts a day, for example, just to to try it with. Um, yeah. If you have to see what kind of engagement you get from it, and not just. Um, posts about you but posts about other people as well because the people that buy from your boutique they are people they are you know they have their own insecurities or whatever um just you know what i mean so yeah 